The following is an exclusive presentation of Cablevision Local Programming, TV that's close to home. Tonight on Neighborhood Journal. The NAACP is an advocate. We uh, don't do social work. We try to make the organizations, the, the government, the institutions deliver on an equity basis to all its citizens. New York City recognizes the 75th anniversary of the NAACP. Art abounds in Brooklyn as area art is celebrated in Dumbo and an outside-in look at the close-knit society of pigeon enthusiasts. I give them garlic, I give them vitamins, I give them electrolytes, I inject them twice a year for uh, I don't want them getting sick. All that and much more coming up on this New York edition of Neighborhood Journal. and welcome to another edition of Neighborhood Journal. I'm Tati Amara. We take it to the streets and to the rooftops for several of the stories in this show. But first, it was a speech about a mountaintop that was one of the shining moments in the 75-year history of the NAACP. Our team of Yesenia de Avila, Bill Powers, and Charlie Cornaccio were at the celebration in the city. Check this out. In its 75th year, the NAACP has plenty to celebrate and a long and productive history to reflect on. The New York State chapter of the NAACP held a weekend-long conference in New York City to commemorate 75 years of strides in equality. Workshops ranging from education, economic development, and civic engagement were held to empower and engage the attendees. Hazel Dukes, the NAACP's New York State Conference President defined the organization and its strengths. Volunteers and people uh, being willing to speak out on issues when they see injustice done. And, and that's what it is. We are a volunteer, but we are a membership-based organization. And so we have strength because we have numbers. During the educational workshop, panelists brought to the table new challenges that the community faces and deliberated on solutions that would help them overcome obstacles. The information was so great. It was all about parents helping their children with the education process. Now, many people that are here for the very first time, and I think that is absolutely wonderful because they are, have things to take back home that they would have never known. I mentor young black males. The key is we definitely have to get out here and do something with our young black and Latino males and set them on the right track. Ernest Logan, the President Council of School Supervisors and Administrators, shed some light on the current issues and encouraged the communities to get involved. I cannot sleep a day not doing what I believe is the absolute best for our children. He hopes that his message continues to spread beyond this weekend. The people there should be going out and turnkeying that information to the other folks in their communities. So what we tend to have at a workshop like this are more of the people who are involved in their local area. Hopefully, the information I provided today will then go out and be transmitted at the local level and to other groups of people and then carry it out that way. The NAACP has a long track record of successful stories, and Ernest Logan is a perfect example. I'm successful only because somebody kept pushing me. I understand that because of who I am today and where I am today, because of organizations like the NAACP that allowed me to get the education that I achieved to be able to be in the position that I am. The conference also served as an opportunity to network, mentor, and be inspired by others who have faced adversity firsthand, but have managed to rise above and achieve success. Randy Kears is a good example. After being incarcerated for 13 years, he is now a book publisher and mentor to others who benefit from his experience. Lending my experience to what they're doing, um, talking about how I was able to make that successful transition, and just using my um, life as a blueprint on how others could successfully transition. The conference also placed focus of a hopeful future 
through a younger generation of activists. Well, I encourage our youth to get involved because they need to they need to be heard in the community. You know, I believe they have a voice just as strong as the adults. You know, so I mean, a lot of people undermine the youth because they're they're younger, but they can be just as strong as the adults in speaking and other aspects also. So I encourage all our youth to get involved. Rosalind Brock, the chairman of the NAACP, reflects on the reasons to celebrate, but also notes on the challenges still to overcome. Given the fact that American society could rise up to the occasion and put a man of color, a multicultural individual, in the White House speaks volumes. We salute that and we celebrate that. However, we also know that there is really a growing disparity across our nation one that's based on economics, but is it also compounded by the issue of race. In a celebratory luncheon, former members of the NAACP, such as Mayor Dinkins and current leaders, including Congressman Charles Rangel, pay tribute to Hazel Dukes and the past and future victories that the New York chapter has had and hopes to achieve. This isn't just for colored folks. This is for the United States of America. <laughs> Ultimately, the 75th NAACP conference with its workshops and festivities stayed true to its mission to reflect on past challenges, celebrate the many victories, and embolden for future possibilities. Meanwhile, Bill Powers shares the history of the NAACP with us.